with Shushu and he is four weeks old officially. I thought that I would pop in and do a quick video about him with an update on his cleft palate and his specialist appointment. You are purring so much. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear this, but. He's got some funky, crunchy sounds in his mouth, but he also is purring. Shushu has a severe cleft palate, and if you don't know what that is, I will explain. Take your tongue and press it against the roof of your mouth. It should be solid there. That is what's separating your mouth from your nasal cavity. It's called your palate. So your palate is what stops food from entering your mouth and then going up into your respiratory tract. The front part is called your hard palate and that has bone. And the back part is called your soft palate, which is just made from soft tissue. And all together that is called your palate. Now, when someone has a cleft palate like Shushu, the plates of the skull are not fully joined during development and the roof of the mouth is not solidly formed. So you can see in these photos the difference between my two foster kittens. Miss Veronica on the left has a standard palate and Shushu on the right has a very wide opening. He's missing huge parts of his hard palate and his soft palate. Some people have said, Shushu doesn't look like he has a cleft palate. Well, you wouldn't know unless you looked inside his mouth. When you look inside his mouth, it's very clear that he does. Keep in mind that kittens can be born with a cleft lip or a cleft nose, which you'd be able to see since the lip and nose are readily visible. But Shushu doesn't have those issues. He only has a cleft palate, and that's why you can't visibly see that just by looking at him. You can only see it if you actually look at his palate. How do you know if a kitten has a cleft palate? Well, some signs would be if the kitten is struggling to eat, if they have formula or their mother's milk coming out of their nose when they're eating, if they're having a difficult time latching, if they're aspirating, all of those things would be a good reason to check the roof of their mouth and see if they have a cleft palate. But I really do recommend simply doing a full body assessment of any kitten who is new to you. So this is something that you can do with any new kitten. You can read my article on kitten assessment and watch a great webinar on how to assess a kitten from nose to tail at kittenlady.org slash assessment. So what do you do if you have a kitten with a cleft palate? Well, first of all, you need to make sure that you learn how to tube feed. Find somebody near you who can teach you how to tube feed them. It is a life-saving skill, but it's something you need to learn how to do hands-on. Shushu is tube fed throughout the day and that has made all the difference for him. The next thing you need to do is schedule an appointment with a dental specialist. This week, Shushu had his very first appointment with his veterinary dentist and I was so relieved to be able to get there and have her take a look. We go to Dr. Woody in San Diego. She's an awesome veterinarian who specializes in dental cases. She's helped with cases like Gooseberry, my former foster with a severe overbite. At the dentist, they looked inside his mouth and confirmed that it is a very severe case, but they were happy with how he looked otherwise. His lungs sound great and he has no irritation in his nasal cavity, which are two big issues with cleft palate kittens. Because he's being tube fed, we're able to avoid those problems. Tube feeding is something that I'm very comfortable doing with him at this age, but I'm nervous about as he weans onto solid foods, you know, when they have teeth, it can be a lot harder to tube feed them. The premolars on the side of the mouth really act as like scissors. And so when you're putting a tube in a kitten's mouth who has premolars, that can be really dangerous because they can bite the tube, it can become an obstruction, it can become an emergency. And so I asked her what her feelings were about that because there are some people who will simply wean cleft palate kittens onto solid foods and there are other people who will continue with tube feeding. Ultimately, she felt that while you can give... <laughs> what are you doing? Ultimately, she felt that while it is possible for us to try solid foods with him when he's got all of his teeth, it is certain to result in him having rhinitis, which is, you know, inflammation and irritation in the nasal cavity. Because he's such a flat-faced kitten and 
He has such tiny nostrils as is. I'm extremely nervous about doing anything that's going to result in inflammation to his airway. Um, so we decided that that's probably not what we're going to do. I probably will just continue to tube feed him. You know, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, there are things that I can do to make that a safer option for him. I'm going to be looking at making some bite guards for him for um, when he's tube feeding. You can use either part of a syringe or part of a straw to act as a bite guard so that they don't bite down on the tube itself. Um, we're not there yet. He is a little bit delayed and actually has no teeth yet. Uh, so you go ahead and be as delayed as you want. I am not looking forward to him getting his teeth. But the truth is, we're gonna take things one day at a time. I'm honestly just so happy that he looks as good as he does considering his condition. Um, and that really is because he has been tube fed his entire life. If it's working, let's keep going. One goal I have is for him to get big enough to be able to get an E-tube inserted. That's a sedated procedure where they go in through the neck and put a more permanent tube that goes down into the esophagus. Um, but he will not be big enough for that for quite some time. He'll probably need to be about two pounds for that. And right now he is half a pound. So for now, we're gonna make do with the tube that we have. We also talked about an option where sometimes veterinary dentists will create a plug that can go into the cleft palate to kind of act as a temporary barrier. Um, she felt that sometimes that can work, but other times it can make things actually a little bit worse. So um, she's going to do some more research on that and see if that's an option for him. Uh, unfortunately, his is just so big that it's not really a simple case. But ultimately the big goal is surgery. It's the only way to fix a cleft palate and sometimes it can take multiple surgeries. But the reality is he has to be at least six or eight months before that's even an option we can start to figure out. So uh, right now the big focus is on keeping him alive long enough to determine what surgical options he has and who's going to do them and all of that good stuff. He's so happy. He's still just purring. He knows I'm talking about him. <laughs> You're so happy. He loves when we hang out together. Happy boy. Happy boy. <laughs> so once he's more developed, he'll need a CAT scan to see how much bone he has on the parts of his palate that are there. That will determine if he's a candidate for the standard cleft palate surgery. And Dr. Woody did a great job explaining what that is like. So this is where the, you know, the suture is supposed to be, is right down midline. Um, and, you know, some clefts are, are just in the soft tissue, some include the bone. Um, you know, this one's definitely a big one. Um, so it's probably all the, all the way um, to, the, to the front here. And so what we're going to be looking at is how wide this is um, of lack of bone, because we see the soft tissues, but we don't know where the bone is. Um, if the bone extends clear to where the soft tissues are in that in that little guy, um, then we'll have a fair amount of bone support here. And then what we end up doing, multiple procedures. So we extract these teeth and let it heal with gum. And we'll say this is a big defect that we have. And then once that's all healed, we're able to take all of this gum tissue and we make a big flap big as we can and then we move it over and same thing's happening on this side the soft tissues so we move yes we so move. you end up with the center being soft tissue yeah mm -hmm. we, we, we'll never we solve the, the bone. bone problem uh-huh nope we'll never so so then we can at least get the soft tissues closed here and what that's going to do is leave a large because we've just picked this up and moved it over a large defect here that has no gum so the bone is exposed and they have to heal on their own. Oh. So healing by second intention. And that yeah. tissue will eventually that, begin to grow. It does It does well. That's a weeks long process of sure. getting that all to grow back. Sure. But the thing we have to watch is, depending on how much bone support there is underneath it, um, if we put these two soft tissue edges together and there's no, there is no bone support there, then the tissues, when the animal breathes, will 
fluctuate. Mm -hmm. And that can tear apart stitches and other things. Sure. Um, so it's actually ideal if you can overlap them, but we hardly ever have the luxury of that much tissue. Um, so a lot of times, yeah. Then it ends potentially in, in a small failure somewhere and it requires yet another surgery to, to close that. If he isn't a candidate for that, then we'd be looking at something more rare like grafting. But the truth is we won't know for a very long time what his options are. So for now, I'm just really happy that we know an amazing specialist who is doing research, who's talking to other veterinary dentists, who's trying to come up with the best plan for his specific case. And in the meantime, he's got me here to meet his needs as he grows and changes and just to be his buddy and keep him alive. So he's a lot of work, but he's, he's truly a really happy little guy. Sure, he sounds a little funny when he breathes and he needs to eat differently. And yeah, he's going to have some challenges during his first year of life. But the truth is he doesn't know he's any different. And if I have things my way, he never will know that he's any different. He's just going to be a happy, healthy, carefree guy getting lots of love, just like any other kitten. So my advice for anyone who's going through this is really just to you know, take things one day at a time, learn tube feeding, talk to a veterinary dental specialist, and prepare for many months of being buddies with your cute little friend. You are gonna be my sidekick for a little while. And someday we are going to correct that palette once and for all. I love you, Shushu.